Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to your 20th Svelte tutorial. This one is going to be on writable stores. Okay, so essentially in Svelte, stores allow you to um, store your data essentially globally um, for all of your components to access. Okay, so um, for smaller projects, you probably don't need to use stores, but um, as your projects get larger, um, it might be necessary to be able to access some data globally but typically you probably want to keep it a bit more simple and um, just uh, you know keep the flow of your data from top to bottom through the usage of uh, properties and things like that. But like I said, sometimes stores are useful. So um, in today's video, like I said, we're going to be covering the writable store. Um, there are different kinds of stores in Svelte, but the writable store is probably uh, the more common one. Okay, so um, just for demonstration purposes, or um, just to uh, I guess save some time, I've already written up um, uh, a few a few lines of code here. So if I go inside the browser, we can see I've got something like this currently. So what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, change my name right here through the usage of this input field. Okay, so for example, if I was to press, uh, if I was to type in decode and then I press append, I want decode to appear here appended to my name right there. If I was to now press set, I want decode to replace the entire thing. So we're going to be implementing this right here using stores or writable stores. Okay, so um, let's go inside uh, the text editor right here and take a look at this starting code. So as we can see, I'm quite simply importing the edit name component, and then I'm setting the name value to be DOM by default. And then I'm simply printing it out and rendering out the edit name component. Okay, so now going inside edit name.svelte, we can see uh, it's quite simple what's going on here. We have declared a variable called value, and then we are binding that value to the input field right here. And then we are simply uh, declaring two buttons with the handle append and the handle set functions right there, currently empty. Okay, so the first step is to declare our writable store, um, which is going to store the name value like we saw right, um, right up here. So let's go back inside the text editor and we're going to be we're going to be creating a new file. We're going to call this file stores.js. So of course, you can name this file whatever you like, but right here um, we can see by the name it is going to essentially store all of our stores. Okay, so right here what we can do is uh, we can import we can import from svelte forward slash store we can import writable right there. So this is going to allow you to create a new writable store. In this case, we're going to use it to create a store for the name. So right here, we can then quite simply export a constant called name equal to writable. And then inside here, we're going to take in or we're going to set by default the name to be DOM. Okay, right there. So now this store right here, this, this name right here is actually a writable store. Now it's going to have essentially three methods. It's going to have subscribe, update, and set. So essentially, as those names suggest, they allow you to do different things to the actual data. Okay, so let's now go back inside the app.svelte and we're going to now import that store. So we're going to say right up here, import. We're going to be importing from the stores.js um, we're going to be importing right here uh, the name store. Okay, so now we can essentially using this, we can gain access to the current value of the name store. In this case, by default, it's going to be DOM. So now let's go back inside here. And in order to, I guess, uh, subscribe to that data and to receive updates when they happen, we can say right down here, name dot subscribe and then Within here, we're going to have access to the actual value. So we can say value right here. And then in this case, we can quite simply just set name value equal to the value from the store. So in this case right here, when it first loads up, this value is going to be DOM. Okay. And then we're simply assigning DOM to the name value variable. So let's make this something like Mike. 
by default just to see what happens okay um, if I was to save this and go inside the browser we can see it goes back to DOM okay in fact we can probably just make this undefined or just make this unset by default and of course we're going to get the same result right here if I was to uh, name this store decode right here save this we can see now we get decode right there so it is grabbing the value from the store now essentially when this component here updates this value the update is going to be received by the main app right there but there is one last thing to do in this case right here and that is to handle um, when the component gets destroyed essentially we need to unsubscribe to the store okay if we don't do that we might get memory leaks so let's go inside here we can make a new constant called unsubscribe and this right here is essentially it is going to if I can spell this correctly so unsubscribe this is going to be a function returned from the subscribe method and essentially when you run it it's going to unsubscribe um, you from the store so now let's import right up here from Svelte the on destroy function and then we can go down here and we can say when the component gets destroyed okay we can just run the unsubscribe so there's actually a much easier way to deal with this and avoid the usage of this quite explicit syntax that will be covered in the next video but for now we can save this and of course we're going to get this same result right here so let's move on to actually making this input field work so going back inside the text editor let's go inside the edit name dot svelte so now uh, we need to firstly just import that store so we can say right up here import once again going to be importing from stores dot js we want to import um, the name store okay and then within the handle append we can simply say because in this case here uh, with the append and um, we want to actually of course append that data okay so we need to say right here name dot update okay, so as you can see here we have quite a few methods so set subscribe and update to choose from we're going to choose update right here and update is going to give you the value of your current sorry it is going to give you the current value so right here we can say value once again and then whatever you return from this function is going to be the updated value so now we can we can quite simply just say right here return value plus then a space or actually let's let's do a comma let's do a comma so we're going to say value plus comma plus the current value of the actual um of the actual input field right here so you know what we might as well just to avoid confusion and possible bugs um, we'll just need to uh, name this one current so current refers to the current value of your actual store name so now we can see we're just simply appending the value of the input field to the current value of the name inside the store okay so now if I was to save this right here and if I was to press the append button it's going to fire off the update then the subscribe right here is going to run and it's going to update the value of this when it gets outputted so now going back inside here we can say for example DOM then press append and we can see we get DOM right here appended to the name value we can do it again and it continues to happen so now let's cover the last section and that is going to be the set uh, button okay so going back inside here let's go inside the edit name and we can just quite simply within here call name.set and then we can essentially just set um, the uh, the new name so we can just say inside here value just to grab once again the current value so now when you set that it is going to simply if I go back inside here if I say DOM it's going to set it to DOM right there and that is how writable stores work like I said you want to make sure you check out the next video because that one is going to take you through a much easier process when it comes to actually updating and retrieving the store values thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one